All right, guys, welcome back. I know it's uh, I know it's been a couple weeks. Um, I've just been super busy, um, and so yeah, I'm gonna kind of hop right into it. I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about uh, some of the stuff that I've been doing recently. So, uh, I believe my last video I talked about like how to make money, like what I would do if I were like trying to make some racks, right? Um, and anyways, I kind of decided to take my own advice, and so I set a savings goal for this next year. Um, I want to save fifteen thousand dollars in this next year. Um, and the way that I'm going to do that is by saving $300 every single week. That's that's the goal. Um, and that's every week that's actually my top priority other than like making sure I get my school work done. Is uh, putting $300 away every single week. Um, so to do that, like, so right now I'm a personal trainer obviously. So I'm working like Monday through Thursday doing personal training. Um, it's actually been a really big two weeks for me. I signed $2,000 worth of new business. Um, now, I don't make the actual 2K, I make like 40% of it. Um, but what that means is that that's re gonna be recurring revenue. So every month, I'm gonna be, basically I've upped my monthly revenue to about two to $3,000 a month, um, which means I'm making about 40% of that every month. Um, so whatever that is, that will go towards the savings goal, uh, saving everything that I make from personal training. Um, and then obviously just trying to keep building the clientele. Um, I've been doing a lot of, we call them PFAs, which are personal fitness, no, why, why? Personal fitness assessments, sorry, I don't know why. I, I'm used to just calling them PFAs. Um, but what that is, is it's basically we take new members, new members come in, and they they basically sit down um, with me and they do a consultation. Uh, we kind of go over like their goals, what they're doing to get there, and then I basically try to, as a trainer, the goal is to show the value of, of a training program and why someone would need a training program. Um, and so I essentially do a PFA, try to sell them personal training, um, and I've gotten really freaking good at it in these in this in these past like I've been doing it for uh, two months now. I've been like training consent like like working basically as much as I can personal training. It's been two months. So um, in two months I've gained six. I'm at six sessions a week, um, which is hard to get. By the way, <laughs> this stuff's hard to do. But I've went I've gone from two sessions a week to six sessions a week. I've gained four sessions a week in um, in the span of two weeks, which is really good actually. It's it's not. Not bad at all, especially since I live in um, an area that isn't exactly socioeconomically like high. Like, there's not a lot of people here that have money, and so trying to sell them training that costs seventy, eighty dollars a session is really difficult. Um, but since doing a bunch of PFAs, I've gotten way better. Not only at like just speaking, like I feel like I'm more comfortable just talking in general, uh, but I'm getting better at each PFA dialing in the value points, really trying to gauge like how to overcome objections um, to get them to purchase a program. Um, and I've gotten to the point where the only the only objection I have is price. That's the only objection. Every single person loves the training program. They're all in, but they the people that don't buy, it's a, it's a financial decision that they just, they can't afford the investment because um, it is an investment, especially at the club that I work at. It's, it's super expensive. Like it's unrealistically expensive. Um, but you know, I think I think the, the potential is definitely there. And what that tells me is that if I did try to do some sort of like private training eventually, I think I could be super successful because I could charge like less than le literally less than half of what I'm charging them currently and still make more than I'm making right now. So I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Right now, I'm just trying to get the sales experience. That's kind of the biggest thing for me. Um, I'm really so I'm, I'm a sales major, and so. With sales, it's it's a, it's a very much a skill, and it's very much an industry where you have to have experience for employers to want you. I um, mean, you have to know how to sell things, you have to know how to talk to people, how to do needs discovery, and how to, you know, overcome like all the sales aspects. I'm taking, I'm a freshman, so I'm only taking like sales 542, which is the fundamental sales class. Uh, but once I kind of go through the program, it's going to be great. Um, I'm also going to join the sales team at my at my university, um, so. We'll see if I, well, I'm going to try out to, to join. Hopefully I make it. I think I'm going to make it, but, um, yeah, so they, apparently there's like, they, they, it's about 40 people that probably try out and they only take eight to 12. So if I can make that, that would be awesome because that would also give me experience. So then once I graduate college, I'll be able to like, it'll just be so much more on my, on my resume that would make me uh, more valuable to employers. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about that. The whole, like that whole part of sales has been going great. Um, and then I serve at Olive Garden, so I <laughs> I make extra money on the weekend. I pull a double on Saturday, which is like probably like 
it's probably about a 12 hour shift, eight to 12 hours. Um, and during that shift, I probably make about 160 to 240 dollars. So that's a big chunk of my savings goal each week is made on one day. So it's nice because I work Friday, Saturday, Sunday at Olive Garden, and then Monday through Thursday at my club. So I'm making pro I'm I'm making over three hundred dollars, meaning I have money to spend as well. But I'm really I'm really just trying to save as much as possible. Um, the goal for me would be after this first year, if I can save fifteen grand. I have a buddy of mine who, if you're watching this, Vance, uh, he flips cars, and ever since he told me, he like like he's like the most successful person that I know at my age. And like, seriously, he like, every time I think about him, he's like the, the one person that I know that I, that every time I'm like, I don't want to work today. I'm like, Vance is working today. And so I go, I go to the work anyways. Cause I'm like, I kind of thought about what he did to get to where he started. And he basically, he just worked all the time and saved a huge amount of money so that he had the capital to invest into the cars so he could start flipping cars. And so in my mind, it's like, that's just what I need to do. I just need to save the capital first because I don't have the money to buy the first car. So my thought process is if I can save about 15 grand, maybe even less than that, honestly, like I won't need the full 15 to start flipping cars. Um, but 15 K would be a really good point to be able to flip like more quality cars. That way I'm not like tr buying these like two, $3,000 trash cars that have very high risk. I want to have a car where it's just undervalued. So like if it's a $12,000 car, I can buy it for nine grand, clean it up, make it look really nice, and then hopefully get a little over 12. That way I'm still making about three and a half K per car, but it would be like nicer, higher end cars. That's kind of the goal. So um, anyways, I'm just gonna kind of do that and see, I, I need about a year. I know it's gonna take me about a year to get to that, but if I can be flipping cars through college and make a good amount of money while I'm here, I have no expenses, like I have no bills. In college so if I have no bills then I need to be working all this is my mindset it's like I should just like right now is the time to save I'm like on a four-year vacation where if I work all the time and save a bunch of money if I could put a down payment on a house by the time I'm out of college like that would be awesome if I could have enough money saved that like getting a job after college is like okay that's cool but I already have money you know like that would be great um, especially if I can keep getting the entrepreneurial experience so Anyways, that's what I'm doing with money. Um, and yeah, I just thought I'd kind of share that and kind of just talk about some of the things that I do. I literally work all the time. Like that is my whole life right now is just, I just work. And then I, I'm in a fraternity. So like I have, I have a social life. I just, I, right now the priority is work and I include school in that. Like I see studying as work. Like I don't, like I don't see any difference between working a shift at Olive Garden and going to class. Like they're the exact same thing to me. Um, they're both work. They're both uh, things that I'm doing, sacrificing for my future self. Um, a really good, like amazing quote. Okay. And I know like Andrew Tate's very controversial and I, and I do not agree with a lot of the things that he says, but sometimes he says some things that I'm like, yeah, like that makes sense. Like he, what he goes, all I care about is, um, like monumentally achieving endlessly. Like that's all I care about. And that's, and that's such a great statement. Like, and that's, I feel like that resonates so much with me is that that's all I care about is like monumentally achieving these big goals that I'm trying to set for myself and then taking these small steps to get there. Right. Um, <clears throat> so I'll kind of go to the gym. So this is what I'm doing right now at the gym. I, so I, I went on a bulk, right? So I bulked for like a year and I really only bulked for like five months. Like I did like five months of like actual bulking, which was like my first five months here in college. Um, and so I got up to like 185 and then I went on a mini cut. I went on like a super aggressive cut for like a month. Cause I, I hate cutting. Like it's just, it sucks. I look tiny. I feel weak. I'm not making gains. I'm just maintaining the muscle mass when I'm in the gym. So I hate cutting. Um, so I cut back down to like 170. Okay. And then now that I'm at, I'm about like 173, 174 right now. Um, I haven't, I've been like bulking, but I haven't been tracking my calories and I'm not, I'm really just making sure that I'm sorry, hitting my protein goal every day. Um, body weight and protein goal. And then I'm just trying to shove calories for the rest of it. I'm trying to just kind of slowly push my weight back up. Um, after spring break, I'm going to be hopping on like an actual bulk. I'm trying to get to 190. That's the, that's the weight goal that I'm trying to hit. Um, although I'm going to, I'm deloading here on spring break so that I can like come back and actually work hard. Cause I've been just breaking my body for like maybe over a year. Like I don't remember the last time I went on like a deload or like took it easy for a week. Like that just, I don't know. I've just always just lifted hard, hard, hard all the time. 
Um, so I think deloading is going to be great. It'll help me kind of reset everything so I can st continually drive that muscle growth for when I get back. Um, the other thing I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get into powerlifting a little bit more. I want to do more strength oriented things. So like as far as my physique goes, like I'm not going to compete in bodybuilding. Like I'm not going to compete. And I feel like I've at least in this past like couple years, like gained more and more of an acceptance of what I look like just because like, I, like, I feel like I look good. Like, I don't know. Like I like, it's like, I, I, I don't have like this, like crippling body dysmorphia where I look in the mirror and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm so like, that's just like, like, I feel like there's a lot of like influences out there that feel that way. Or they're like, like Alex Eubanks, a great example where like, he's like, I don't look as good as I used to look. And he's still like shredded. Like dudes like top 1% male in terms of physique. And he's like, I don't know. I just don't look as great as I used to. And I'm just like, dude, shut up. Like you look fine. Right. So I, I've kind of gotten to that point with myself where I'm like, dude, shut Like I look fine and I'm going to keep doing like accessory movements in a bodybuilding context to keep driving muscle growth. And if I'm eating correctly, I'm still going to be driving muscle growth. I just want to put an emphasis on strength. So, um, the goals that I have for myself right now that I've kind of created these past couple weeks, um, when I on bench press, I'm trying to hit 315. That's going to be the big goal. So I want to hit three plates on bench press. Um, I want to hit a four plate squat. So 405, and then I want to hit a five plate deadlift. So four, 495, but I'm going to hit 500 because that's just a cooler number than 495. So 500 deadlift, 405 squat, 315 bench press. Um, that I believe, I believe it's a 1220, um, combined total on that. So that would be awesome if I could get my SPD up to a 12, 1220. And then from there, I mean, I don't know if I, if I'm enjoying it, if I'm enjoying the strength gains and, and the cool thing about strength is that like, it's a completely different mindset than, I mean, not completely, but it has similar aspects as bodybuilding, but the way you train strength is so much different than the way you would train for size. So I like, there's a huge, there's a big learning curve right now for me trying to just do a bunch of research into like how to optimize for strength rather than optimizing for muscle mass. Um, but at the same time, I still want to keep driving muscle mass. So like my accessories are heavily like bodybuild bodybuilding oriented. And then my main lifts, my main compounds, like I'm, I'm basically power building in a sense, but I would say right now my focus is much more on power. I'm just trying to, I want my one rep max to be freaking heavy. Um, yesterday I benched two, I moved 275 at 172. I'm one, I, I was 172 yesterday and I moved 275 on bench. I got, I got 265 and then last time I just, I, I got it off my chest, but I couldn't finish it. Um, and that was my, that's my max ever right now is 275. So I think like, honestly, I think I could probably hit these goals in six months. I don't think that's unrealistic at all. Um, if anything, I might even be able to hit them sooner if I really dial in specifically for powerlifting. Um, so today, oh, that's the other thing I'm trying to do. I want to be more functional. That's the other, so like, especially for legs, like I'm doing a lot more functionality oriented training. Um, as a trainer, I've kind of like begun, begun to understand that our upper body and our lower body serve different functions in our lives. And so the way we train them needs to be different. Um, and especially lower body, like, I don't know, like, obviously I want to have size in my legs, but I think the bigger focus is going to be flexibility, mobility, and range of motion. Like if I can be strong in very deep ranges of motion, um, even if it's just with my body weight, like having access to the muscle tissue and my, you know, glute med and hips and all that type of stuff working efficiently together. I think that's just going to drive my squat up, especially my squat because my squat is not, I hate, I hate squatting. I'm so bad at squat. My squat's terrible, by the way. Um, it's 345 right now. And I mean, I'm recovering from a knee injury. So getting it up, like, I think I can go higher than that right now, honestly, but well, that's going to be the hardest lift to get up because I'm just not great at squat. Um, but yeah, so doing more function based stuff is going to be great. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, yeah, today we're deadlifting. So today's a leg day. I'm going to film th these deadlifts. Um, the way, okay. So I haven't, I'm not on a strength program right now. So and I haven't like deadlifted a whole lot. This is the second time I've deadlifted in the past like two years. So I'm gonna, I'm doing sumo, which I know it's sumo, but I like sumo so much better and I can lift so much more weight. So just for a numbers perspective, I'm just gonna do sumo. It's also, it, I, I feel like sumo has less of a mobility requirement. Um, you don't have to be as 
because when you're when you're doing conventional you need to be able to sink your hips down in order to get to the weight so you can properly engage your lats um, and I I can I'm just it's it feels so uncomfortable and sumo is so much easier for me to just lock in so I'm gonna be doing sumo and that's how I'll hit my 500 deadlift eventually um, last time I did deadlift I pulled two or sorry 425 for five so today I'm gonna I'm gonna be working with th uh, sets of three I'm probably gonna do like four by three and then I'm gonna see well Honestly, I'll probably hit a one rep max first. I'll probably warm up to a one rep and then do four by three. Um, I'm hoping to do four by three with probably about 425. Probably about 425 um, today. I don't feel like I need to go too much heavier than that. I also don't want to rush it because my body's not used to deadlifting. And so I don't want to, like it's very hip. It, there's a lot of hip drive in deadlifts. So I don't want to hurt myself by just trying to throw as much weight on the bar as possible. So I'm going to try to hit a 440 single today that would be the heaviest that's the most amount of weight i would have ever been able to pick up um, so i'm gonna try to hit that and then yeah then we'll see if i can't get some pretty good deadlifts in today so anyways uh the other thing i'll say if you're doing powerlifting, uh warm-ups are essential and this is something that i don't really do for bodybuilding because i'm just lazy and i just want to lift heavy or i just want to get into it and typically with, with bodybuilding you're doing so many reps that like you do a couple warm-up sets and like you're fine. Like you just do like one or two. Whereas with powerlifting, like with deadlifts, like I'm about to roll out and stretch and walk and do like all these different things to prepare for the for my heavy deadlifts. So um, that's the other thing is like just learning how to warm up. It's been kind of crazy, but uh, yeah, we'll get we'll get into it. And I hope you guys enjoy me lifting some heavy ass shit. So we're about to be doing, um, basically I'm just gonna go singles up into the 445, or 440. Um, if I hit 440, like super freaking easy, I might go heavier. Um, I don't think it'll be easy, but I mean, who knows, man? I mean, I just, I've looked up a bunch of like technique tips for sumo deadlift today, so um, trying to really engage the lats um, and freaking drive through your feet. It's, it's, like, it's like a press, so like a good cue that I've been using at least on these warm-ups that's really helped is think about pushing the ground away from the bar rather than pulling the bar away from the ground. So it's more of like, like in my brain, I'm like, push the world away as I'm about to hit this shit with loud music. And I'm just like, push the world away. But uh, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see if my strength is feeling good today. I'm, I'm super hydrated, so that's gonna help a lot with like just producing ATP so I'm able to get get this heavy weight. But um, I'm about to do 405 and then I'm gonna go 425 and then I'm gonna go for 440. So, uh, yeah, that'll be good. Um, we'll see if we get it. I think we can. I also fixed my grip, so I feel stronger gripping the bar now. I was doing like a complete overhand. Yeah, these wraps, these are like hacks, I'm not gonna lie to you, but when you do a, you wrap it and then you do a hook grip, and uh, yeah, it, it's super secure. So, um, yeah, I'm probably not gonna talk a whole lot. I'm just trying to get in the zone for lifting this heavy ass fucking weight, but. Um, yeah, guys, so I hope I can get 440 today. We'll see. All right, so that was that was 463. Uh, I hit four, so I was gonna go 425 and then 440. I just hit 440 and it just moved so quick. I was like, I can hit 460. So got 460. I don't think it's my true max. I think I can go a little heavier, um, but I don't think my back can handle it right now. Like my lower back and my hips. Like I don't. I just don't think I'm ready for it yet. Um, but I think 500 is gonna be pretty easy to get. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think I'm thinking I'm gonna be able to hit five plates um, here two months I give it two months and I, I think I can give you yeah, about 500 pounds so uh, yeah I'm super excited I'm just gonna work down do some like I think right now I have like 410 on 420 on the bar something like that 
I'm just gonna work for sets of three. Probably do like four or five sets of three, um, just to kind of warm down, I guess. But these will be like my main working sets for deadlift today, and then I'll do some functional stuff, and that'll probably be it. But uh, yeah, no, super good. I'm, I'm so fucking hyped. Uh, my predicted max is 480, so maybe 15 more, maybe 15 more pounds I would have, but that would have been a brutal rep. Um, I don't know. I didn't love that rep. My fucking strap came out right as I was about to go. Um, I did smelling salts for the first time, and that was interesting, but, uh, yeah, definitely worth it. Alright, next thing on the agenda today, so, so I typically alternate between doing leg curls, um, like machine leg curls, and doing Nordic hamstring curls, so today we're going to be doing Nordics. Um, if you haven't done Nordics before, they will, they will mess you up. Um, they're super hard. Um, I'd say one of the most challenging, I'd say the most challenging leg calisthenic exercise you can do. Um, other than maybe like, like, what do you call them, uh, pistol squats, those are pretty hard too, but, um, yeah, we're gonna do like probably three sets of Nordics, um, the way that you just want to control the eccentric as much as possible and then push yourself up for the, like, concentric and just pull yourself as much as you can, um, these will, like, tomorrow, like, I'm gonna feel these, but these are amazing for leg stabilization and if you're trying to, like, fix knee problems, this is like a functional movement you can do as well to help fix your, some of your knee problems and build some stability back in your hamstrings. Um, it's gonna work your adductors as well, so like, like just your whole whole posterior chain is gonna get messed up from these glutes, everything, everything, all the above. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do three sets here and then we'll go do kind of like a more functional circuit after this. So uh, yeah, good times. a functional leg circuit so this is going to be um, basically the whole goal of this is to uh, create like and we want you to be able to access uh, like muscle tissue and deep ranges of motion so especially in like your glute med and your uh, hips your hip abductors like being able to sink and carry all the weight is really important um, especially in a squat or in any sort of lunge or literally any leg movement you could possibly do so um, this will also challenge a lot of ankle stability so a lot of people have weak ankles because we wear padded shoes all day, so like you're basically walking on a pillow. But um, this this whole circuit will be really good if you're trying to run through it. Uh, it's also easily progressible, so if it's too easy, you can just like raise the height on some of the exercises or increase the weight or literally anything like that. So it's more challenging. Uh, first time through, I'm just gonna do a body weight, and then I'll start adding a little bit of weight in for the next two sets. I go through it three times, so um, yeah, let's get into it. for today we're just gonna be doing those three exercises so there's step downs 
uh, lunges, and then I, they're like pull quin steps, I think is the technical name. I call them Q steps. Um, but essentially, uh, when you were a kid, you're probably told like putting your knee over your toe like isn't like a good thing. Um, it's actually not true. So when we can gradually train your knees like to go over your toe, you're putting a ton of isolation into your quad, right? So that means that over time, your quad is going to be able to handle more weight and uh, be able to stabilize your knee at bigger ranges of motion. So things like squats will be easier, uh, front squats will be, like everything's going to get easier because your quad is used to uh, being uh, a controlled stabilizer of your knee. So that's why I do these steps and these are, it's, all these are easy because you can just increase the, the height. So like I'm going to increase the height for the next set and probably hold the weight, that way I really get a burn going. Um, First time through, just kind of a warm up, and then the next two sets till failure each one. So, um, yeah, I'll kind of I'll show you one more round, but yeah, that's kind of my functional functional movements for the day. Um, yeah, uh, I will say this on the record: I do hit calves. All right, I'm hitting calves right now. It's the first time you see me hit calves, but I figure we got to grow the bottom part of my leg too, instead of just getting that little meat slab in the front. So, anyways, I hate calves not my favorite thing to do, but they are necessary, so we'll do like three sets here or All right, well, overall, I'd say that was a pretty good leg day. It's 460, 465 on deadlifts. So heaviest deadlift I've ever done before. Um, and we're just gonna keep getting that up, hopefully hit 500 here in the next couple months. Um, yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next one.